There's less than 48 hours left to grab Ryoko's Guide to the Yokai Realms on Kickstarter. It's got loads of awesome stuff. More info at the end. Thanks for the support. Link below. Here are five more underrated but awesome races in D&D. Pallid Elf. You've heard of Space Elves, High Elves, even House Elves, but everyone is sleeping on the Pallid Elf. They get the usual elf stuff. 30 foot walk speed, dark vision, advantage against being charmed, proficiency in perception. What really sets Pallids apart is their incredible minds. You have advantage on all insight and investigation checks. Stack that with a background that gives you proficiency in those skills and you're pretty much Sherlock Holmes. Remember, your passive insight and investigation are buffed by plus five if you have advantage in those skills. So with just a 16 wisdom, which is effortless to get with point by because all Pallid Elves get plus one to their wisdom scores, you are rocking a 20, yes, 20 passive investigation and insights at level one. You are basically psychic, a master of reading people and reading environments. And as if that weren't enough, you also get some free spells and they're kind of busted. You get the light cantrip for free, which is fine, it, it's okay, but at third level, you get the frankly crazy powerful sleep, letting you shut down groups of low level enemies with one spell. At fifth level, you get invisibility, but only for yourself. It is a fantastic spell for stealth and exploration, and even for combat, sometimes. You can cast both of these for free once per long rest. Wisdom is your spellcasting modifier for those spells, but if you look carefully, you'll see that neither sleep nor invisibility have a spell save DC, so you can totally dump wisdom if you want and it changes nothing. Pallid Elves are amazing options for intellectual characters, or for players in campaigns who love to get down and dirty with political intrigue and mystery. They make great wizards, druids, monks, clerics, and especially paladins because then you can be a pallid paladin, which is just fun to say. Autonome. Every time I remember that autonomes exist, I'm amazed that I never see them. Why are they totally forgotten? Is it because the Hadazi were broken on release and had a whole scandal associated with them? Is it because plasmoids are incredible sentient puddles of death and gif are hippos with guns. Yes, autonomes came out in Spelljammer, and as such they are locked in with an extremely attention-hogging crowd. But still, they're awesome. You're small, you have a 30-foot walking speed, and you are a construct, so you're a little more resilient than humanoid races because you dodge spells like hold and dominate person. Then you get armored casing for an AC of 13 plus your dexterity modifier. It's free mage armor, basically. For any light armor builds, this is straight up better than any non-magical armor available in the game. Then there are a ton of other benefits to being a robot. Resistance to poison damage, immunity to disease, advantage on saves against being poisoned or paralyzed, and you don't need to eat, sleep, drink, or breathe. You still have to take a long rest, but for you it only takes six hours. And during those six hours, you are conscious, so you can keep watch no trouble. You also get two free tools proficiencies which is amazing if you're in a game that uses crafting mechanics to build weapons, like my new Kickstarter book totally has in it. Plug, plug. Even if not, though, grabbing thieves' tools and a disguise kit proficiency is really handy. But the first of the two real powerhouse features is built for success. This lets you add a d4 to any ability check, attack roll, or saving throw a few times each day. It's a permanent guidance effect, basically, and it can buff some really awesome things, like initiative rolls or a counter spell check. Don't sleep on that power. Healing Machine is the other fancy ability, letting you roll one hit die, add your constitution modifier, and regain that many hit points when the mending spell is cast on you. This is healing from a cantrip, which is something that only autonomes can do. Also, this is broken if you're a sorcerer with the blood well vial, because it's a free plus five sorcery points every single day. On that note, autonome make great sorcerers, wizards, warlocks, rogues, and bards. Special shout out to druids as well, because wild shaping into a robot beast is freaking badass. Oh, what is this? Be not afraid. I am RN Jesus. I have come to grant any wish you desire. No limits. No limits? You, you mean I could have my hair again? Okay, there are, there are some limits. I'm, I'm, I'm God. I'm not Superman. <laughs> oh. Well, I, well, then I guess I want martial characters in D&D &D to be powerful all the way through the game. And fun, too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, you could wish for anything. 
You could wish for world peace or... or... Oh, oh, and I want boss fights that terrify and challenge players and reward them for thinking outside the box. Then worry not, fam. I got you. Here's Ryoko's Guide to the Yokai Realms. Wow. It's the ultimate D&D expansion with enhanced abilities for martial characters and an incredible boss battle system. And here you even get free dice if you back today. Use them well. Free dice? How did you get these? Did you steal these? Use them well! This is the last chance to back Ryoko's Guide on Kickstarter. And because so many people supported it, we're giving everybody free dice who pick up a physical book. There's the 350 page core book, another 300 page adventure book, dozens of new races and classes, three sets of dice, a weapon mechanic skill tree system to enhance martial characters, a wall hanging as big as a small adult or a large child, a harvesting and crafting system, Sekiro inspired prosthetics, an avatar inspired element bender class, with four subclasses, combo attack mechanics, familiars, beautiful magic item and spell cards, a companion book to give to your players for quick reference at the table, and a beautiful gargantuan dragon mini over 10 inches tall that will blow your players' freaking minds. Link in the description. Thanks so much. You are awesome. Your support has changed all of our lives. Ryoko's Guide to the Yokai Realms, out now on Kickstarter. Grab your free dice if you back today. Link below. Chromatic Dragonborn. With so many Dragonborn to choose from these days, the little evil Dragonborn kind of gets left out. They got released in Fizzbands, along with the flashy Gem Dragonborn who can fly, and the Gigachad Metal Dragonborn who get two breath weapon attacks. But don't sleep on Chromatics, because they get a damage immunity. With the updated Yuan T, there is now only one other race in the game that gets a damage immunity. I'll give you until halfway through the next sentence to guess what that is. So Chromatics can become immune to one damage type a day from level 5 for one minute, it was Grung by the way, depending on the color of their dragon ancestor. Red dragons are immune to fire, blue dragons are immune to lightning, etc. This isn't only awesome, it opens up an entire playstyle that is only available to Chromatic Dragonborn. Red Dragonborn can detonate themselves with a fireball in a crowd of enemies and walk away unscathed or set up a wall of fire, grapple an enemy, and hold them in it, burning both of you to a crisp, except you don't feel it. Or Green Dragonborn can cast Cloud Kill and then grapple an enemy to hold them down in the fumes for some ridiculously high damage and probably 20 plus years in jail for war crimes. You also get a breath weapon attack that takes up only one of your attacks, not your entire action, for some nice damage, and you get a damage resistance. Sure, they might be the most basic of the Fizzbat, Dragonborn, but they're also the most unique. For creative players, they give a whole new way to play that is offered by no other race in the game. Chromatic Dragonborn work best as spellcasters, who can abuse spells that work well with their immunity, like wizards, warlocks, bards, sorcerers, and druids. Hexblood. Did you ever see Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost? Did those goth chicks awaken something in you, then you should check out Hexblood. They are the witch lineage. Lineages come in when your current race changes, like when you get bitten by a vampire, you become a Dampir, or if you put on guy liner and grow out your hair, you become a Hexblood. And as you should know by now, lineages are all busted because they let you keep the original movement speeds of your original race. So if you're an Aracocra Hexblood, you start out with a flying speed and all the other Hexblood awesomeness. Hexbloods are fey, so you dodge all those hold person type spells. You have 30 foot walking speed, dark vision, and you can be medium or small. You also get any skill proficiencies your original race had, or you just get any two of your choice. Obviously, because you're a witch, you get some magic. You can cast the spells Darkness and Hex once per long rest for free. Darkness is okay, but Hex is really good. It's a bonus action spell that curses an enemy to take an extra d6 every time you hit them with an attack. So, classes that attack a lot can go hard with this right from level 1. They also get a neat utility ability in Eerie Token. 
You can pop out a tooth or a lock of hair and it becomes magic until your next long rest. During that time, you can communicate telepathically to any creature holding the token or see and hear through it as if you were standing where it is. You can stash it somewhere and see through it super easily. DMs love this as a source of giving out free exposition. Hexbloods make great fighters, monks, and very thematic warlocks, but honestly, it's such a good race that it can work for basically any build, except maybe Barbarian. But before the last entry, here's an honorable mention, the Lotus Den Halfling. They get all the standard halfling bravery and luck, but also some awesome spells. Entangle and Spike Growth are great, flavorful, and powerful. And you even get Druidcraft if you want to do a little bit of roleplay shenanigans. Getting access to Spike Growth is great on any build that can force movement, like a Warlock. Honestly, if you want to play a halfling, this is probably the best option. Durgar. Also known as Grey Dwarves, Durgar are the underground, underdark dwarf option. They are the only dwarf with 30 foot movement speed in 5e, and they share the common dwarven resistance to poison damage and advantage on saves against being poisoned. More importantly though, they get the superior dark vision, letting you see up to 120 feet away in darkness as though it were dim light. This is god tier for ranged attackers, because even enemies with dark vision usually only have it out to 60 feet. This means you can just stand 100 feet back, sniping away at advantage, cloaked by the darkness that only you can see through. You also get psionic resistance, which is advantage on saves against being charmed or stunned. Charmed is a super common condition, and stunned is devastating if you get hit by it, so this is pretty decent protection. But your most iconic feature is Durgar Magic. At third level, you can cast Enlarge Reduce, one of the most versatile spells in the game. Obviously, the fun thing to do is enlarge yourself for massive damage and thickness and advantage on strength checks and saves. But you could also shrink a locked door to create an opening that you can squeeze through or enlarge a piece of machine to cause the whole thing to jam. Or shrink down an enemy, stuff them into a titanium box and see how your DM handles it when you drop concentration. At fifth level, you get invisibility, just like the pallid elves, and we all know how good that spell is. The difference for Duragar is you can cast it on other people, not only on yourself, so you can upcast it to shield the entire party from vision if you have the spell slots. Look, mountain dwarves are obviously busted, but if you're looking for more variation and creativity, then Durgar are probably the way to go. They make great paladins, fighters, rogues, and especially druids, because you can enlarge yourself before wild shaping, maintain concentration, and become a giant, giant badger which is fun. It is the last chance to grab Ryoko's Guide to the Yokai Realms on Kickstarter and get your free dice. So if you haven't checked it out already, link is in the description and also in a card up here somewhere. This time last month, I couldn't sleep. I was sick with nerves. I was literally sitting at my computer shaking, getting ready to launch the trailer, which feels kind of silly now, but it, it felt very uh, scary at the time. Thank you so much for everything. You've changed my life. You've changed the lives of all the team. Ryoko's Guide to the Okai Realms, out now for the last time on Kickstarter. Link in description.